Hello, welcome. My name is Robert Mazurek and I warmly welcome you to the Mr. Battery channel for five years on the Mr. Battery channel. There has only been one episode of the battery, which was an advertising episode. And that was the episode that dealt with battery chargers and chargers that I truly consider to be good, of good quality. I only agreed because I use Minuela myself and there was complete consistency between what the distributor of these devices wanted me to test and examine. In fact, they didn't want anything. They just wanted me to take these two devices, check them in my own way, and give some recommendation. I use these devices myself and I like them, but I neither encourage nor suggest that they are the only best and greatest chargers. And I receive many such offers from the Chinese. At the very beginning, I replied that the channel is not for sale, that it is not, and so on. Then I realized that it wasn't working, and I started responding that, okay, I would agree to a fair test, but I decide what we test, examine, and check, and I want 1,000 euros for my work. And of course, they would prefer to provide the goods and give a referral link. They offered me 5 or 8%, I don't remember exactly, depending on the Chinese manufacturer, that if I encouraged you to buy it, saying it was great, fantastic, then I would receive either 5 or 8% of the amount you spend, I don't remember exactly, the goods were on Chinese docks, or you were transferring money to China, and he was leaving from one of the European warehouses. There were no documents stating that this is a return. I did not receive any document for this battery. In some way, any delivery notes, anything like that. Zero, nothing. The battery was so secured that it was not visible that there was a battery there. It was labeled as accessories, but not automotive. It did not say that these were electrical accessories, I don't remember exactly, but that was how it was written on the shipping list, and it did not come from the German warehouse. This producer kept persuading me and making many promises, and I decided some time ago that I would let this topic go and start responding, yes, there is cheese, I am very interested, please send it to me, I will record it. My intention is simple and trivial. I want to find out what it is, and this particularly caught my interest because it is a battery with a capacity of 100 AR, but at a voltage of 25.6 V for LED lights, which is a nominal 24 V. In particular, I think that these low voltage energy banks of 24 V or 48 V will be a big hit. And this type of batteries, I don't know if connected in series will give 48 V, connected in parallel will give us 200 AR, etc. I wanted to learn more about what it is, what kind of battery it is. This coincided with the introduction of a new load in Mr. Battery Labo. For voltages of 24V, 48V, 110V, and 220V. As a result, of course, I still have a bit of a communication problem because I would like some kind of chart to be drawn. I am now working on receiving results in a way that is documented. What does it look like? I draw similarly to the alphabet. It's the alphabet, but it might not be that simple. However, I'm recording this with a camera just to have it and to make it visible. So what now? I took this battery. It arrived with about 30% charge, which is how a lithium battery should be during transport. It should not be charged to 100%. Rather, it should be discharged to about 30% of its capacity. I charged this battery and connected it to the load. And this load told me that for a voltage of 24V, listen, Robert agrees there is... 100 AA in this battery, and I realize that everything is just on the edge. Everything is nice, cool. I want to see if, in the case of our lithium batteries from KIO, it often happens that the battery there slightly, slightly moves up by about one, two, maybe three. Ah, oh, I wanted to make sure that in the case of the second discharge, this battery would show something more. So I charged this battery exactly the same way I charged it for the first test. And this battery, listen, look. In the second test, that is in the second discharge test at 50 amperes or CO5, half of the battery's capacity shows me 99 ampere hours. But I found that this one ampere hour on one hand somewhat disturbs my perception of it because I was rather expecting, for example, it to come out to 101. I charged this battery once again for the third time and for the third time I connected this battery to the 50A resistor and this time I saw the result of 97R. 97 ampere hours. This started to make me think, the 100A holds up under heavy load, but in the next instance, one amp hour was lost, and in the third, another two were lost, totaling three amp hours. I came to the conclusion that either these cells are of lower quality, or something is wrong with this battery. 
Therefore, I decided to take a look inside, see how it looks from the inside. The battery consists of eight cells. Here we have this black one, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth. According to the manufacturer, we have eight cells with a capacity of 100A. The parameters of the BMS are as follows, 8S, which means it can handle a maximum of eight individual cells in series, corresponding to a maximum nominal voltage of 24V. In this case, for lithium batteries, it is 25.6V and 100A. 100A because it is a battery with a capacity of 100A. In lithium batteries, the current is specified as C1, which is what the standards predict. Often in the catalog sheets, they specify 0.5C and so on, while we are interested in C1, which means that the cell loaded with a current of 100 amperes must be able to be discharged for one hour under laboratory conditions in order to achieve the promised 100 ampere hours. The cells are securely connected using welds. In the background, you can clearly see a single cell. I might move this aside here. In the background, you can see the cell and they are connected by welds. Here we have the output for the connection to the negative, such as from the BMS. We have one, two, three, four such wires that go to the last cell to the negative. And from this side, we have four such connections that go to the terminal outside, plus from the last cell on this side, we have a positive coming out. And additionally, from the BMS, the battery's positive B plus gives us an extra connection here as you can see. And a little wire, and we have a connection for control, of course. Here we have a black connection going to the first negative from the series, then to the first cell, to the second, to the third, to the fourth, to the fifth, to the sixth, and to the seventh. From the eighth positive, the red goes, which in this case means that the esteemed Mr. Chinese has arranged it so that the black goes to the first negative, and then everything goes to each positive, to each cell, from the first to the eighth. This looks like some connections probably for a temperature sensor. There are two wires going here. One is placed deep down there, the second is probably here, and the third is somewhere under the BMS. If I'm wrong, please correct me. I will leave an additional close-up here so that those clever intelligent beasts watching the Mr. Battery channel can see. The battery might have enlightened me about something, but it says TS1 so I would rather bet that it is for measuring temperature. I honestly admit I don't know what these four white elements are, so I will leave this information here for you to see. And it goes to this little board right here, and I wouldn't dare to guess what it is. Rather, I would ask for your help to suggest what it is. Here's just another shot. Take a look. Here are those very cells. I don't know if removing it will reveal anything more. I rather doubt it. It would probably be more beneficial for me to simply see how it is disconnected. Of course, after all this action, the battery was definitely very nicely welded here. With the aesthetics, it doesn't look quite good, rather fantastic. Rather weakly, but this battery is well welded. It is solidly welded. Slightly. So I thought to myself that I don't have lithium batteries in my offer yet at this voltage of 25.6V. But what do I lose by taking two batteries with a capacity of 100 AR, connecting them in series, which means that our capacity won't increase, we still have 100 R, but our voltage will increase. And I connected our LEDs in such a series connection in a logical and efficient manner. I connected them to the same 50 amp resistor, and look, the result I got here is 106 amp hours. Of course, tomorrow it will buzz for the second time, for the third time, in one of the upcoming videos, I will say whether there will also be a drop in the case of our batteries. I also do not intend to hide this from you in any way, because that is not how I operate. Besides, anyone who knows me knows that transparency and a fair approach towards you are the most important things to me. That's about it. I was interested in how it is built, what it looks like from the inside. I believe that the direction in building these batteries 24, 200, 212, will rather shift towards having ready-made batteries with a nominal voltage of 24V. But I also start to see that besides energy banks, such as those for lithium or wall-mounted ones that are already automatically prepared for these 48V installations, batteries, 
with a voltage of 48V or 51.2 wide for lithium exactly, will also begin to appear in these boxes in a very short time. 38 volts, which means 51.2 for lithium exactly. And listen, I get a ton of these things coming in from the Chinese because I receive offers like one or two every two weeks. Now I respond to everyone, yes, I'll take it, yes, I'll take it, yes, I'll take it. There are supposed to be a lot of things there, but I don't need those things at all. I'll play with them for a while, find some comfort, and I just want them to go to better hands. And here I have just a simple proposal for you. Let's agree that I will wait about a week from the release of this video. If someone wants this battery, let them propose a really small, reasonable offer. The amount he will deposit into the Mr. Battery account with the note donation, only and exclusively to be able to buy a few batteries or a few charges for testing, where I will want to check what is the most popular and best-selling. I have checked my own. I know how it is built. I know how it works. I know how it functions. Maybe this will be useful to some of you, perhaps with such small loads, not 50 amperes, but around 5 to 10. It will serve someone for many, many years, and maybe one of you will gain some great benefit or great pleasure from it. I won't find myself in this. I don't want it to just sit there and rot, just like soon. I can give that away. When I want to buy something, I buy it right away, exactly to the standard that I want. In the quality that I want, however, as I mentioned earlier, I will now be accepting these things from the Chinese. I will sincerely thank them, but all of this will end up in your hands. So if someone wants it, I really don't want to profit from it because it's a gift horse for me. And we can definitely agree that I will only consider those comments where the amount you propose is stated in the first part of the comment followed by the justification for why you think so. But you must write the amount you propose at the very beginning and then explain why it matters to you, and I will choose purely subjectively, without any contests, without any drawings, etc. Let's agree that whoever captures my heart is absolutely welcome. Of course I will. Only be taking people who subscribe to the Mr. Battery channel. Battery, to appreciate you for what you do, for helping me struggle with fulfilling this dream of mine because it seemed to me that in four years it would be super realistic to achieve then i extended the deadline now i have extended it to six years and i still see that it is very poorly realistic for channels like mr battery the battery could enjoy a silver button well unless a person starts undressing and running around the yard with a spinny thing and telling stories but i guess that's not for me like and subscribe if the content on this channel interests you, of course. If you ever find yourself in Szczecin, I warmly invite you. Grifinska 106 is the address for you. You don't have to buy anything. You can just come by for a coffee, give a high five, ask for a cup for the viewer, drink some water, or whatever you wish. We can have a great time when I'm there. If you come around lunchtime, you can have lunch with us. Take care. Greetings from Szczecin. Bye.